Hello, how's it going? Happy Thursday, an hour later than usual. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing really good. And um, today we are sewing the Colette Myrna, which I actually don't have a picture of. We cut it out yesterday. It's very um, feminine and I'm gonna do the maxi length, which is a first for me. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really awesome. I'm really excited about this dress. I actually almost started sewing it without even thinking just cause I, I wanna sew it. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Um, how is the lighting? I know I thought it's a little bright. Can't really see my instructions because this fabric is a little dark. So I have brightened up the, the machine for you guys and I put a light on today. So hi Terry, how's it going? <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm just uh oh you know I can do one more thing here. This. You can't see that. Cool. Hi Olivia, how's it going? I like that you're you know, you're uh <clears throat> you're trying out Twitch pretty consistently. Thanks. <laughs> Hi Ida, how's it going? All right, so um, at the last second, I decided that, um, oh good, Choban, thanks. Yeah, it looks, it's pretty bright, huh? I mean, adding the overhead light helps. It's kind of partly cloudy out, so it's kind of hit and miss, you know? But um, I decided that I'm gonna line the midriff because otherwise you have uh, three seams right there and it's just a little more finished if you're gonna line that spot. I'm gonna line it in kind of a budget style so that I'm not deviating from the instructions too much. And I totally suggest you guys line your midriff if you're um, making the one with all the seams in it. It'll be smoother and it'll just, it'll look nicer on the inside, you know, a little more finished, but there will be a seam through it. So it's just kind of a faux lining, you know, we're kind of doing the budget version of it. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Okay, so let's get to it, because I'm pretty excited about this. You know what's really funny is that I get to use the exact same purple thread color that I did on the Cali shirt dress. They are not the same purples, but it actually matches almost better on this. This is more of a wine, and that one was more of a, um, I would say closer to eggplant, at least the dark purple was. I'm gonna sew a little bit because, because um, I haven't sewn in a bit, um, there's oil dripping down my, my needle shank. I noticed it a little bit ago. And then I'm gonna kinda, I'm just gonna kinda clean it up a little bit. When I'm sewing all the time, which used to be the normal, um, I wouldn't have this issue. And it's not a bad issue at all. So it's just the oil's looking for a place to go. Usually the machine, it's going on the moving parts, but yeah, you can see there's a little oil there, so. I don't want it on my dress, man. There we go. Cool. Got my bobbin winder ready to go. And um, I'm going to start with, I think, sewing. Oh, I'm going to do all the darts first. That's right. So here's my midriff. Here's my epic amount of skirts. Here's my little, I'm a, I cut a lining. So I just cut both versions of the midriff. So there's version one and version two, and the difference is the midriff. So the one I picked has all the horizontal seams in it, which is really subtle. It's hard to see in the pictures. And then the other version is just a smooth one. The one I used on this cover image here. So that was the other version. Um, and so what I did was I just cut the midriff for that version. I'm going to use it as the lining for the one I'm doing. So nothing fancy there. You can do it. Alrighty, let's see. So I'm gonna start with the darts on the back because there's three at the neck and three at the waist, or two at the waist, sorry about that. And let's get used to seeing the right side of the fabric. I am pretty sure this is the right side. Can you see the difference? This is a little truer to the color. All right, I don't back tack my darts. This is one of the home sewing things I do. It makes a nicer, smoother dart end. 
um, and a little more seamless, you know, it'll lay nicer. But I do have trouble remembering not to backpack, backpack. <laughs> I almost said backpack. So let's see, I'm gonna line up my little nips. Sometimes when I have a lot of darts next to each other, I actually look for all the other nips to make sure I'm not stealing one of the nips from the others. Hi Louise, how's it going? So I have one dart here, one at the center back neck, and one here, symmetrical with the first one I mentioned. I do back tack at the beginning. I almost didn't right there, but that's just because I don't back tack a lot. I back tack when I want to. Changed my needle to a size 14. If you're sewing at home, a 12 is probably more appropriate. I don't have a 12. I have 10s. I have a few 10s. And I have, um, I found a bunch of 14s. And then I have a ton of 16s and 18s. Probably more like 18s. So it'll probably be a lifetime before I finish those. Because <laughs> I don't think I'm going to manufacture anytime soon. All right. The weather's finally good enough for me to wear my Amelia. But you know what? It feels a little smaller than ones I've made. And I don't know why. I made the exact same one I always cut out. It's kind of funny. Maybe it's me. I better start on that watermelon summer diet, you know. <laughs> All right, so here's my third one. So it's so tempting for me to back tack. I'm going to try not to. So I lift up my needle, pull out some threads, and I cut it. And then I, and then I uh, tie it off. This is great too because if you end up wanting to adjust your darts and you back tack right there, <clears throat> removing the back tack can probably um, cause a little damage to the fabric. It gets a little stretched out, tired. Maybe you nip it with your seam ripper. Um, and so it is kind of nice if you need to change it. If you haven't back tacked there, it'll be a little easier to deal with. And I think, you know, in production, like in the garment industry, they they definitely back tack. But they probably use such a small needle and small stitch length. It's a little more seamless. Darts are pretty fussy for a production sewing thing. You just don't see it because most of the things we buy are knits anyway, which don't have darts. They would rather do a princess seam than a dart. All right, let's see how they look. So that's the back neck. Do the waist. It's so quiet here, I feel like putting music on. I really need to figure out the music thing. Hi Karen, how's it going? I know you guys are worried that the music might be distracting, but I, I think I could actually do it to where it's just a nice background. Don't back tap, don't back tap. That's what I have to tell myself. Time my threads. One more. And I have bad news. My iron cam is not working. So I'm still having trouble with those two new cameras I got. They're so nice, but they don't register on my computer. So I, uh, I'm going to um, activate my little tech plan that I got and have them come out and set it up for me. They said they would, they better. <laughs> that would be so nice, you know? They said I don't have to bring my computer in because of the plan I bought, so. I'm like, yeah, hooking my computer isn't very convenient or easy now. And being without it is pretty much impossible with this schedule, so. All right, so I do have to iron this though. So I'm going to, so this is the back bodice and there's five darts in it, but this is the only piece with all the darts. So there we go. Got them here. I'm finding these little um, Cali shirt dress threads everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Like sometimes I'm like, am I shedding? You know, like where are these coming from? So this is the front. And the first step on the front while I wait for my iron to heat up is to put in the um, gathering stitches right here and right here. 
says to put in three rows a quarter of an inch apart. I know, I feel very laid back actually. I think the more I stream, the more laid back I get. I got my hair cut yesterday and it looks it looks really funny to me. I don't know why. All I got was get it trimmed, but you know, like when she styles it, it's like smoother. And I didn't wash my hair today because I don't do it every day. <laughs> I feel like I should have. I need the frizz for some fluff, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I put a headband in though, which will come out in a little bit because man, they make my head hurt. So um, I was, one thing I was gonna try to check was the seam allowances are five eighths inch for this. I was kind of surprised that they put the um, gathers a quarter of an inch and a, a quarter of an inch apart. They put them at quarter half and three quarter, at, which is beyond the five eighths inch seam allowance. So I was going to see if they remove it. So let me just look ahead here, and I don't really want to ignore their um, step because I, what I was thinking is that it might create kind of a little pleat effect. Hi, Janice. I did, um, no, 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 that's on the wrong side. It's very subtle. Here's the right side. Here's the wrong side. Can you see the difference in color? Barely. This is the wrong side. This is the right side. You are making me nervous. You know, I honestly can't tell. Oh, you know what? Maybe you're right. You know, it's these brown birds is how I look, but they look faded on both sides. And you see how crisp that looks? See how crisp the white looks? It looks crisp on this side too. I feel like this brighter color Maybe you're right. Oh my gosh, I think you're right. Look. Good thing you asked. Wow. Sad face, you can't tell. I know, right? I think it is this side. Because I don't see any of the little bits of printing ink. I don't know if you can see any. You see that? I thought that was fluff. Or like from my iron. Good thing Nancy's not here. She'd get on me about this seam ripper. But hey, this is a good example of why it'll be, it'll be easy to take out because I hand tied the bottoms, right? <laughs> Dang it. I really can't tell the right side from the wrong side. I love that you can't tell either, but you thought that that's what it was and you were right. You never sewed darts. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You sew darts to the wrong side of the fabric. You just happened to discover, help me discover that I did sew all those on the, I sewed them on the right side meaning the right side of the fabric, but which is the wrong side to sew them to. <laughs> so hey, if you came late, you aren't gonna miss a thing. And these are really quick to take out. But I'm still kind of curious about the um, gathers, like where that third row of gathers hits, unless the shoulder has a different um, seam allowance, which I wouldn't think it would. I'm kind of curious. I want to know this before I start because I don't want to forget it. Pull in the thread toes, adjust the gathering stitches, and remove the gathering stitches. Okay. Seam ripper. It's drink. <laughs> I should change it to seam ripper. <laughs> they wanted to start a drinking game every time I got my seam ripper out because I went through kind of a bad spell of having it out a lot. Hey, I'm fine with my seam ripper. How about you? <laughs> exactly. Let the drinking games begin. 
But my point is that then I'd be smurfing a lot more, wouldn't I? <laughs> That's what I always thought was funny as a knitter was that I would go to knitting groups that had wine, you know? Or I'd go to like my book club and bring my knitting and I'd get literally one row done because, you know, like <laughs> you think, oh, I'm going to go to book club. I'm going to get so much knitting done because I can just sit there and just knit. That is absolutely not what happens because you're chatting with your friends, you're eating dinner, you're talking about the book, you know. And then I get home and, and then the next day I would look at my knitting and I'd made like three mistakes too. <laughs> so I had to take it out. I'm like, okay, great. That was the worst thing I could have done was bring my knitting to my book club. Okay. I always seem to right at the beginning of the stream. It's tradition. <laughs> These little back tacks near your, your notched um, is the legs of the dart are always kind of a funny spot. At least I can see where I stitch now. Yeah, so true about the book club and knitting. <laughs> Going anywhere. Yeah, you know, I think the best knitting I ever get done is on a plane on an international flight, honestly. You know, or in a waiting room because I can't stand um, waiting. I can't stand appointments being over like late, like a few minutes fine. But if it gets 15 minutes late, I get, I get really antsy, you know? And I, I don't, I mean like 15 minutes, okay. I can understand, you know, cumulatively over the day, a doctor getting 15 minutes behind, but I feel like there should be like built in things that kind of reset their, their, um, clock during, throughout the day and I know part of it's because they just want to offer really good care and they don't want to just cut someone off but you know people come in there for one thing and then they talk about 12 things I get it but at the same time like I stopped everything I was doing came to the doctor or whatever whatever appointment it is and um if they're late I get kind of been out of shape yeah right so Siobhan and going to a sewing retreat I wonder um Oh, you're fine about the steam ripper. Oh, yeah, I don't make any apologies about, apologies about my steam ripper. I only have three tools sitting here, and they are right here. This is it. I have other little tools around that are accessible, but um, there's no way I would sit down with you guys without my steam ripper. I don't see why people even, like, make it a thing. <laughs> okay. Let's start over again. All right, so this is my wrong side. I like this color. <laughs> I like this color. But yeah, this is richer. All right, I'll stop whining. Start again. Um, it's so funny because I I don't know why like I I love sewing everything like everything we always sew I'm always kind of excited to dig into it but this one I think it's because I know it's a collab pattern oh gosh dang my machine just like raced off it sewed straight but um, I didn't get my back tack in um, I don't know I think I always get excited kind of sewing a collab pattern. I feel like they're one of the first indie patterns to pattern companies to really get it right. Okay. Easy there, Phoenix. Okay. I can't see my ends as well now. So maybe I should put my pins back in. Wait, wait, wait. Just making sure I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> I, for a second there, I thought I was doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Now I'm just going, it, did I? No, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I want the bright, I want to sew on the brighter side. Uh, <laughs> I was just talking to my daughter yesterday about like mistakes because I was thinking, it's so cliche to say certain things in life, but they're so true. And until you really like get it and you believe it, um, they're cliche until that moment, right? Then they're just like, oh yeah, they're facts. And like one of the things I was talking to her is like, you know, you can't have success without mistakes. You just, you can't. You can get lucky. 
but not all the time, you know? And you can't rely on luck. Am I right? So you have to make mistakes to be successful. And she wasn't like talking about not wanting to make mistakes or anything. We were just, I was just talking at her like a mom does, you know. But um, I find it interesting that people get really upset if their sewing isn't good enough or something because, I don't know. It's not a big deal to me, I guess, anymore. I make mistakes all the time. You guys see me. Oh, I'm out of bobbin thread. Great. That actually wanted that to happen because I already have a bobbin sitting here. And I'm ready to wind another one. Wait, wait, wait. Oops, sorry. I just bumped the microphone. Why is my thread like... What's going on with my thread? Okay, wait a second. I got to look at my thread here. What's going on here? Oh, no. Wait. This is so weird. I must have caught my thread because it's like looped and so confusing right now. <laughs> okay. There we go. I mean, I do remember like apologizing for things I'd make to friends, but it was my friends that were like, you know, you just need to, when you give us something, just say, here you go. And when we tell you, great, thanks, Adam, we love that, blah, 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 just say, thanks. And they, they were the ones who taught me to shut up about, but I could have done this wrong and I could have I done this right, I could have done this better, don't look at this part. You know, they were just like, can you please stop with that because, um, and they really helped me just say, thanks, I made it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and sometimes I just don't say that I made it when you know, you're in public, you know, and someone says, oh, I like your dress, so thanks, you know? How many darts can I sew today? correctly. <laughs> My fabric getting tired. Okay, so I guess it's a holiday weekend this weekend. So are any of you guys going away? At least in the States. It's a holiday weekend in the States. Yeah, Janice, that's true. <clears throat> but you know, you're gonna you're gonna find that fabric that you're just like, oh, um, I love this, and you won't realize it doesn't have a distinct right or wrong until you get home. And there are fabrics that it is impossible to distinguish. Maybe if you're a textile expert, um, and sometimes fabric stores have a little sticker that say this is the right side, you know, which is helpful. I have. I remember one time in a class at one point, a teacher saying, you know, it is important to use the right side of the fabric because it can behave differently. And you know, just because they're a teacher, I feel like I was like, oh, okay, you know, I believe you and I've thought that and I've actually literally thought that throughout my life. And then it kind of dawned on me at one point, I'm like, really? Did they really think that? Because we always celebrate in the world someone doing something not the right way and it turning out amazing, right? So um, what if they were just saying that because they were the teacher, you know? Because <laughs> I don't believe that anymore. I, there's no adverse effects to using a fabric wrong side out. Like what would be the, re what would be the adverse effect? The only thing I can think of is if it's a fabric that like pills on one side, you know? Um, because then, yeah, I could see that, but, um, we're not typically sewing with a lot of those very often. And most of those are really obvious because they're either a knit or, um, they have a, um, distinct side, you know? Yeah. Right. Ida, that's such a good point. It is just saying thanks is hard sometimes because sometimes you want to be able to say, hey, um, I have blood, sweat, and tears in this. So let's talk about how fantastic it is, even though it may not 
be really that fantastic, it actually is a minor miracle, <laughs> you know? Because sometimes um, success is a completely, like the, the measure of what you think is successful at the beginning of a project changes drastically by the end of the project, right? Because maybe by the end of it, you're like, okay, well, I'm glad that's done and it didn't go as planned, but I sure learned a lot and that's what you consider the successful part. And you're thankful that you're past it, but you that you had the experience. And it's not like you can gift someone something with that kind of message, you know? Yes. Uh, I won't catch that thread. So it's very short tail. It's gonna be like inside, it is knotted. It, it won't bug me one bit and it won't get caught. There, there are thread tails in my seam right here that'll get caught in the seam and I won't have to worry about it. Darts are a really great tool um, to fitting and, and it's a really important thing to learn how to sew and they're not, no, they're not hard. They're just, I think, mysterious because I don't think, like you might have some garments in your wardrobe that have darts on them and you've never noticed them before. Um, and so I think a lot of people, when they first start sewing, they're like, what are these? You know, like, what, what are these? Do I cut this away? Why am I just sewing this like triangle in the middle of nowhere of my garment? Um, and it's just one of those things that they're so subtle. They're probably one of the um, first ways garments have been fitted since garments have been made, you know? So I'm leaving, I don't back tack. The reason I'm not back tacking on a dart is, um, maybe I can show you the difference on a piece of scrap. Oh yeah, and look, here's my um, selvage. So the selvage was printed on the darker side. So that's a good indication that this is the right side. And that's the wrong side. And now it's really obvious right here. Yeah, go for it, Louise. Because I have lots of, lots of opinions on dart placement. <laughs> it's not a holiday in Sweden. Oh, but you have election. Oh, I saw that, you're, that there was an election on, on a Sunday. What a smart day to have an election, you know? Here in the States, that would be probably... Uh, People would give the excuse that um, a lot of people would go to church. Okay, so I'm gonna back tack. So now when I back tack right there, I don't know if you can see it, but it drew up the fabric. See, it got a little like bunchy. Now you can refine this technique and not get it bunchy. Um, I feel like I'm a pretty good sewer to try not to get that. And so on the outside, you see this weird little like bunchiness as well. I might be able to iron the heck out of that and get rid of it. The other thing is like some machines do a really long back tack because they don't, you don't get to control maybe how long it is. And some of them do a chunky back tack. And then right there, that dart is typically right here on the bosom. Like these darts are placed mediocre. Um, and you know, every woman is different, you know, but darts should be about an, they're like an inch back off from the apex. The apex is the fullest part of the bust. You never want darts to go on to the middle of your bosom <laughs> because it looks very unflattering. And this is what that can create. When you back tack right there, sometimes it'll create that kind of puckery look. It's not to say that I don't get that anyway, but that's because this isn't placed in the right spot. It needs to, it needs to be so that it's stretched out. Are you voting today in the UK? I thought that was on Sunday. Yep. Waist to bust and armhole to bust and side seam to bust, it's an inch from the apex. So um, when you see some patterns um, that aren't like that, part of it, um, is that they didn't draft it properly, but a part of it could be how it fits the person. So you can't just throw the, the pattern drafter under the bus on that one always. 
I have seen a few patterns out there that they are in the wrong place on everybody, everybody type. And so then that, you know, that it's, but they're usually too long. They're usually way too long because it's easier to make a dart long, too long than it is to make it too short. Cause when you make it, like if you're trying to take a lot of fabric out and, and you need to do it in a short amount of time, short amount of distance, then you, you run the risk of getting a point there. Like, you know, just because you've actually made a cone <laughs> right there. So if that's the case, then you need to break up your dart. You can put two darts next to each other, you know, like an inch and a half apart. You can split it and put one in the armhole and one in the waist so that it's a gentle shaping around. Like think um, if for you knitters out there, if you knit something that has um, bosom shaping, um, it's kind of like an all over thing, lots of mini darts. So, and to do that, you would slash up where you want your new dart to be, and you have to go to the apex, and then you um, spread that spot while closing the other dart so that you've split the amount and you split the dart up. Yeah, right, Louise? Yeah, that doesn't sound right. Maybe it was just a sketch, but I have seen that a lot, especially on indie patterns. I don't know why. Helps to turn the iron on. <laughs> I like clicked it, but I didn't turn it. I didn't turn it on first. I've been trying to turn my iron off if I don't click the surge protector off because um, people can walk into my shop even though they technically probably shouldn't and I wouldn't want them to see the iron on and panic even if it was you know even like switched off so okay so these are scrap pieces this is a scrap right here this is a scrap and this is a scrap they look like pattern pieces <laughs> I don't want them accidentally so my pattern pieces all right All right, so this is the wrong side. So I'm gonna do these gathers the way they say to, which is at the quarter, half, and three quarter mark. I'm just gonna do one tick width longer. I like gathers kind of close together and not big and, um, I don't know. I like them to look really scrunched. The heck, let go, let go. What are you doing? I still can't get my throat played up. I don't want to pay three hundred and fifty dollars for my guy to come so I can um, open my throat plate up. Why is this? What is this? What's going on here? Oh, I'm making it smaller. That's why. Dang. I just made my gathers really tight. My um, <clears throat> throat plate is marked with three uh, with quarter inch markings, so that's kind of nice. <laughs> Look how little that is. Whoops. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah. So, Louise, that's a good. I mean, thank goodness for Instagram, right? bummer I have a, a few patterns that are pet peeves and um, I don't ever want to be that person that calls them out but they um, and they just keep getting made and people keep posting pictures and they love them and I just think that looks really bad and I'm not sure what they must feel really good on is what I think you know I don't want to be the the, the um, sassy sewist. <laughs> I tend to want to support all pattern designers no matter what. And if there's a little issue, like, here's how you get around that. You know, if this happened to you, this is how I would get around it, you know. But there are a few patterns I'm like, oh, I really wish people would stop making that. <laughs> 
<laughs> not terrible, but it, it just celebrates poor fitting and then makes it acceptable. And it's a pant pattern, so that patent pattern, like pant patterns in particular, women have a lot of trouble with. And learning what is good fitting is, is just as important as learning how to fit it, you know? Okay, so, um, so this is a, conf a really confusing looking pattern piece. So this neckline, this is my neck right here. So it's gonna get scrunched up like this. And then this is my center front right here under the bust. This is the Amelia dress that I made recently. It's all bias cut. I'm sorry about the decolletage. <laughs> I'm gonna show it to you guys. Cheyenne, how's it going? I remember you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thanks, Olivia. I love this dress pattern. I've made a bunch of them. I really love it. And I made it live recently, like two weeks ago. So we're making the Myrna dress by Colette Patterns because we're doing kind of a dress sew along all month. And I asked uh, people what they wanted to sew, and so they suggested a bunch of patterns, and then they voted, and we whittled it down, and I decided to do a lot of them anyway. I like sewing dresses. Um, it's Me Made May. I thought, what better way to celebrate? Yeah, it is really comfy. The Food the Line book. Oh, Fold Line, maybe? <laughs> fold Line. <laughs> um, no. But um, I, that reminds me, I wanted to ask you guys, someone direct messaged me and requested a sew along of a pattern. And I wanted to ask you guys, I feel like one of you mentioned the um, pattern, the book to me. So um, I want to ask you guys about it. Uh, let's see, let's see. Here it is. Okay, so she's interested in the clothes in Breaking break in the Pattern book, and it's called the Saraste shirt. S-A-R-A-S-T-E shirt. Kind of like Namaste, but an S and an R with an N and an M R. Um, have you guys heard of that? Breaking the Pattern book? I haven't heard of that. Who, who wrote that? I'm putting all these gathering stitches in right now while I, my iron heats up, which it's definitely hot now. And I'm just following the instructions. They say to put three rows in, a quarter of an inch apart, which is outside the 5 8 inch seam allowance, but, um, sorry. <laughs> but you remove the gathers afterward. Right, let's put my stitch length back. All right, let me iron this really quick. Sorry my iron cam isn't working today, you guys. I'm working on getting it fixed. But right back. Named patterns. You've heard the book. Okay. The uniform. You bought that book. So you guys are talking about the named patterns, right? Or are you talking about the breaking the pattern book? I interrupted someone asking about um, <clears throat> the tunic from the fold line book, or now we know it's named book, named patterns. But then it reminded me I wanted to ask you about the breaking the pattern book. 
Okay, so you, pre you typically you press your darts always towards the center of the garment. Um, and so when you're doing the neck ones, just for those of you sewing this, you're going to do your outer ones towards each other and then the center one either way. It might actually... So one hint usually is the dart, this part right here, will line up with the neckline or the waistline or wherever um, when you've got it ironed properly. I will say that the, the, the waist, the waist isn't lining up that great. See that? But you definitely press them to the inside, towards the center, I mean, towards the center. But that's weird. That's really, I'm really surprised to see that that's not lining up like this. That's how it should look. That's probably just a little oversight. Okay. But trust me, you, you press the darts towards the center. The named named pattern book. Is that the same as the breaking the pattern book? Oh, maybe I should Google this at the end of the stream. Remind me, you guys. I'll check out both books. Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. Let's see here. I'm trying to follow the directions for any of you sewing this as well. So I did my um, gathering stitches. I'm on assemble the yoke. So basically what I call this stage is you're prepping all your pieces, getting ready to um, sew it all together and make all the pretty stuff happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 Lisa. Hi, Lisa. So, so many of you don't have like um, an icon for you. And then I think like when I see Louise and Lisa and you both have the orange thing, I'm like, <laughs> I want to talk to one, just thinking it's one of you. The pig is bad in the book for the uniform tunic or the tunic. It's a uh, grain line studio, I think is coming. Yeah. Grain line studio is coming out with a pattern called the uniform tunic and it has a invisible pocket right here. Is that what you're talking about? It looks cute. Yeah, Megan, okay, yeah. Yeah, and someone in direct messaged me about it as well, about the breaking the pattern book, that is. I'm gonna line these up so that um, they are ready to go. And I'm ready. Okay, so there's my back. Oh, that's my fronts. I keep calling those my back. Oh, name patterns published the book called Breaking the Pattern. Okay, okay. And the Saraste shirt, do you have you heard of that? All right, where are my, my wee yokes? So I'm lining the, um, so I'm doing version one, which is the yoke with all the, it's uh, the midriff with, it's not a yoke. I don't know why they're calling it a yoke. It's a midriff with um, all the seams. So it's a top, a middle, and a bottom like this. This is right here. This is the finished size of it. So I cut the other version to line the back of it. So. so let's just lay these out so that um, it's not confusing. This is the right side. Right side. And then right side, okay. These are the other side. So um, now that they're facing this way, I'm gonna sew them right now. Five eighths and seams, which seems gigantic. Plus, I won't have to um, finish the seam allowance if I line it. I'm kind of, you see, there's a curve there, so I'm kind of holding the the edges, the raw edges together right here. And then um, as I get a little further, I'm pulling this over to line, keep lining it up so I don't have to use pens. And then you see this little shape. You see that little shape with the seam allowance? That means that's the seam juncture. And then usually you can tell which direction the seam allowance gets pressed because if you press it down, you see how it cuts away? That's not what you want. You want it to line up with the raw edges like this so that all of it gets caught in the seam. Um, so let's see, this is like this. And then 
this one. So you line up, that's your seam juncture right there where that angle is. And then I usually hold the top one if it's a curve and I kind of just slowly go along and keep the raw edges lined up where I'm sewing. I don't pull. I am a puller, I admit that. I do tend to pull my sewing. It's just a bad habit. It's like as if, if you're a knitter and you knit tight or loose. <laughs> Not that it excuses it. I'm just saying I tend to be a puller. All right, so here's one side and then I'm going to um, top stitch all these seams. But that's my dessert. I like doing that at the end, so I'm gonna do that in a second. <laughs> all right, so this goes like this. So this one goes here. We have lots of little pieces like this. It's good just to be methodical about it. The darts, I mean, the notches will help you, but um, laying it out and being visual about it and then just trying to be visual and logical about it will help more than the notches. Because you can really get caught up looking for all those little notches and then doubting which one goes to the other and then somehow making it so that they work, <laughs> you know? So use logic and um, keep it visual when you have this many little pieces. I used to have to sew prototypes for motocross pants, so trust me. I, I know, I know. Okay, that's my... All right, let me press these real quick. Let's see, is it pressed, the seams press up, right? And I press down. Oh, press down, I have to press down, that's right. I can see that, I can see that. Okay, like I don't really feel like there's a big reason to do this one with all the seams unless you have a fabric that really highlights it. But um, I like more seams and I like top stitching, you know, so. got really close on that one. I feel like my machine likes to stitch it better. No, no. No. <laughs> okay, so here's my um, midriff. Let's get rid of all these doohickeys. And so here is the lining. So I just cut this, the other version to use as the lining and um, I'm gonna do it just total, you know, budget style where I'm only going to en enclose the front bodice into the seam clean and then I'm gonna leave it raw right here. So just so you guys know. All right, so I'm going to put all these aside right now. Let's see what's next. Oh, this, I forgot to make pockets. I forgot to make pockets. 
Okay. So it has the uh, invisible zipper on the side seam, FYI, which I need to go to the store and buy today because I only have beige and gray. <laughs> don't let me use a beige zipper. Friends don't fr let friends use a beige zipper on a maroon dress because I would totally do something like that if you guys weren't watching me. Just saying, you know. Okay, so let's see. Here is my back. Here is my front. So the back side. A little midriff and this is the just so you guys know wait it's upside down like this okay so this is the armhole side right here side seam armhole so this is the sleeve that's the shoulder this is the waist and this is the center front right here and so um, there would be a nicer way to line this midriff if you did it so that you constructed the center front seam first and then your center seam on your midriff and then you sewed it as all one seam across. The problem with this is, yeah, I know there's no pockets, right? I'm, I'll try and fix that. Um, at least if I, I'll try and at least put it on one side because it does have an invisible zipper on the other side and um, you know, adding a pocket where the invisible zipper is, is kind of a bit thick. So, um, the issue with doing that continuous seam, which would be the proper way to do this finishing with a lining is that you could get the point right here a little bit off. So I'm not going to do it that way just because I feel like I'd rather encourage you guys to line your midriff than to sew and then, um, and do it as opposed to not doing it. Cause you think it'll be hard to sew. You know, so that's just my two cents about that. All right, so this one goes to this side. And this one, pretty sure those go together like that. All right. Move all these threads here. And um, I'm just gonna pull all three at once so they gather the same. I like the gathers to line up with each other. So I'm just pulling all three of those threads. Oh, I missed one, I missed one, see? See, and it looked weird. Okay. I'm just gonna pull from this side a little bit and then this side a little bit so that I don't pull my um, gathering threads through. I need to pull from the same side. So let's pick, a, pick these apart here. I think it all knotted. Okay. All right, so we got our gathers. Definitely want to do these so that you can remove them later because that is in the instructions. All right, I'm just going to check the length before I start like making sure it's perfect. Okay, so I can gather a little bit more. It's a little easier from this side to move. Now that I have a little bit gathered from this end, now I'll start back at this end. Okay, now I'm going to start kind of evenly distributing them because look at how nice they look. They look like smocking. So you kind of want to make sure that they're all even. It might be really obvious if they aren't. All right. I kind of want to make sure I get gathers right up to the center front there. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. But that's the wrong one. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is the wrong one. Okay. I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay, so this is the right side. Mine's darker. Oh, yeah, I had the right one. Okay. 
this is the right side for that. And then this is the one. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay. So you want to sew this at 5 8 inch seam. Keep all these threads out of the way. And remember, one of these rows is going to be outside of your seam allowance. So I'm going to sew it from the gather side, but I'm also going to sew these layers all at the same time because um, it'll be more, more um, chance of success because of all these stitch lines. If you do, you can do it individual layers. That's fine. But if you don't get, when you go to put, like if you say you put the um, outer midriff and the out and the bodice together and then you want to attach your lining afterward you could sew just outside the seam allowance and then the stitching line would show on the inside that's not such a big deal but you do want to line up because you don't want it to get like any like fabric bagginess on the inside so let's see line up all these edges five eighths inch seam here's all my crazy gathering I'm gonna pull all these threads I'm going to pull this one, the top one, and I'm going to leave it towards the top of the bodice so that it's easy to find later on. There we go. There it is right here. Hopefully it stays that way. It might not, <laughs> but I'll try. I love it when we're about to do like the magical stuff, you know, like I'm going to see how my bodice looks soon. I'm not to the gathers yet, so I don't need to see if it's working quite yet. I'm almost there, now I'm getting there. So it looks pretty good. I can gather just a little bit more. I like pulling from this side, so I'm just gonna pull even though it's a little awkward. That looks good. I feel like this middle one could get pulled a little more. Yeah, there we go, see it? It was a little bit slack right there. That looks better. If you do it a little bit tight, then at least you can kind of undo some of the gathers as you go. It's a little easier than trying to get them to gather up when you're sewing. Can you guys see okay? Is it too dark? I know on Twitch you can zoom, but um, I can make the camera a little lower too. That better? Make my gathers nice and even and straight. I think it'll make a difference here and it's easy enough to work on. Let's get the um, under layer a little lined up with the raw edge a little better. Okay. There's my shape right there. My seam allowance shape. All right, let's look at it. This is the right side. That looks pretty good. This is the side that I pulled my threads on. So go to your tails and pull your threads out. Oh, did I do that too soon? You haven't, you, do you, what are you watching on? Are you watching on a um, computer or a tablet that you can pinch zoom with your fingers? That's how you do it. I don't think there's like a zoom button. You have to do it with your fingers. So if you have a computer that you don't have a touch screen, you might not be able to. So This is coming together quick, but I have a lot of skirts, eight skirt panels, and that's a lot of French seams. <laughs> Maybe I should surge it. Um, let's see. When do they repeat? When do they take out the gathering stitches? Probably not then. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I just waste them from a pin and stitch. Remove the. Okay. <laughs> I 
Okay, let me make sure. Is this this side? Yeah, okay. This is this, that's the side, right? Yeah. I can't get a hold of it. Okay, there we go. Part of it, part of it. My top one, the one that shows is being kind of fussy. Maybe I grabbed the wrong one. Ooh, it's so close together, it's cool looking. So I'm just taking out my gathering stitches because I love doing it. Oh, I, I caught it in the seam loads. That's why it wasn't coming out as easy. All right, let's look at this. Get rid of all these threads and get them out of here. We don't need those threads. So it looks good, looks good. And then that's my, that's my outer bodice right there. So this is right here. And then this is gonna gather up like this. And this is my center front. <clears throat> That's good. And so this was my extra thing that I did. I just sewed this on at the same time. So now this isn't against my body. I have a nice um, lined piece. Oh, weird, Olivia. Maybe you just need to update or something. Oh, your dog doesn't like the thunderstorms. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. I hate, I hate to see that poor little pups when they feel that way. I was really glad when like, you know, every time we get a dog and we get our first storm, I think, you know, I'm like, oh, what do they think? You know? All right, let's do it again. Let's move that front out of the way. This is the right side. <laughs> yeah. It goes to the waist, not the shoulder. So don't do that by accident. All right, let's gather it up. So what are you guys working on right now? I know I'm so mellow today, sorry. <laughs> I ordered my cutting mat. I uh, knew that um, one of you might ask me if I got my something off my list done. I'm gonna go get a mirror today, because I really need a mirror. I know um, um, Nancy's making her own dress form I know, she can send pictures on this chat. Hello, Natasha. Welcome, all the way from South Africa. What time is it there for you? Does this time work for you? I'm glad you like the videos. They're better live. Because <laughs> then you can, you know, heckle me or ask questions, talk to the chat, make friends, you know. I'm making the Myrna dress by Colette Patterns. And I'm doing a really long length, which isn't my typical thing, you know? All right, so let's see here. This one I am starting at the gathers in, so we kind of need it to be right. And I, I did a little extra this time now that I knew about what I needed. I'm just going to look at the distribution of the gathers, gathers and make sure that they're pretty even before I immortalize them. Yeah, so I'm thinking about... To me, it's kind of crazy that I'm thinking about it, but I'm thinking about getting a, a good um, dress form. A shoulder mannequin. Oh, collapsible, you mean a collapsible dress form. Mannequins are what you display garments on, on in a window, like a um, store. But a dress form is what you use for sewing. And they're really different from each other. So if you're ever Googling it or buying something like from eBay, make sure you're getting a dress form, not a mannequin. If it's a dress form and they're calling it a mannequin, but you know the difference, that's fine. Just make sure that you don't get a mannequin by accident because they are usually hard, 
hard plastic, you know? <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I'm distracting myself. Let me, let me focus. Yeah, so I, I saw somewhere... Like, I got really excited when everyone kept posting those my body model things. I was like, oh, maybe this is a good dress form. And then it's just sketches. I don't want to sketch. <laughs> I want a dress form. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy. People call those wrong all the time. Because people will say, oh, I just got a, a dress form from my aunt. Do you want it? And I'm like, really? You did? Let me see. And then as we're going to see it, they're like, oh, yeah, she used to own a store. And I'm like, ooh. And then it's never it's never a dress form. It's always a mannequin. I do have one, but it's a junior size, which junior here means teenager. It's a size um, three. If it's my daughter, maybe. My daughter's pretty slight, but um, it, in other words, it's a teenager. So they're not fully developed. They're very petite in, in uh, circumference, so not ideal. It was a gift. Should have just given it to the high school I worked at, but they didn't have space for it. All right. It's a little dark right here for me. It's a little dark for you guys too. Huh, do you want more light there? I can put more light. Just keeping all the, the raw edges lined up. It would probably be faster if I used pins, huh? <laughs> pins? <laughs> then I'd have to take them out. <laughs> yeah, so wolf dress forms are typically considered in the industry to be some of the best. But I, I can't get a custom wolf form and just a non-custom one is really expensive. My little form is a, a wolf, like, so it's kind of ironic that I actually have a wolf, but it's not good for me. I really should find a really good home for it because it's so hard to find and afford for folks. And I want one with legs so I can do um, pants. Okay, so let's see how it looks. I was about to just rip out the gathering stitches, but let's see how it looks before I do that. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Forgot to keep my thread towards the top though. Dang, I caught the stitching on that one too again. Oh, there we go, I got it, okay. All right, taking out all the gathering stitches. Let's see if I got them. I think I'm missing a couple. There's purple thread everywhere. I must have caught that one too. Right when I get to the end, I always end up catching the uh, gathering stitch. Maybe I'm not being very, I pro I'm probably not being very accurate or something. So there it is. It looks so nice all scrunched up. I like it. But I need to get rid of it. Nancy is doing, um, yeah, she's making her own. And um, she's mentioned what it's called. I feel like it's called budget. Wait, not budget. What is it called? I can look it up for you. Um, and so I think it's pretty inexpensive and you get a pattern and then you do it. Um, yeah, right, I know, I've seen the duct tape ones, which I've seen mixed results on those. There we go, so now I've lined it. And this is the outside. Ba ba boom. All right, so let's put in our um, shoulder seams. I'm trying to stay true to the directions. So I've got the midriff, the yoke, I mean, they call it the yoke, it's a midriff. And then um, the edge stitch, the, um, I don't know about do that. I might understitch. I don't know if it's a kit. Here, let me look it up for you. She's on Instagram as um, Dorvis 
fun. Let's see. Let's see if we can find her. Where is she today? She is being marked absent. Okay, so. Oh, it's called Boot Strap Dress Form. Boot Strap Dress Form. Next time she's here, ask her about her um, Instagram and and because I, I I'm not sure if she's public or not, so you can see if she wants to share that. I'm pretty sure she's pretty open with that, but she has pictures of her doing it and there's a lot of stitching and stuff. It looks pretty good. She says it's a tiny bit big and so she did a comparison picture and um but she's she uh, originally right when she finished she was like oh this didn't turn out and then I think she re looked at it and she's like you know what this is actually not that far off as what I thought because I think. One thing I've learned with um, custom dress forms, I know, right, Siobhan? <laughs> she missed the um, all the seam ripping in the beginning, and now she's missed as we're talking to her. Karen wins. Wait, what did Karen say? <laughs> her Insta account is Dorvis Buns. Dorvis Bun. A bootstrap or something like that. Oh, yeah, you did. You totally got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so at the end of the stream, I'll show you, we'll look at it together on the computer, and then we'll look at that pattern book too, you guys, that we were talking about. But um, yeah, so when she looked at it again, she was, so this is my experience with dress forms. When you see yourself three-dimensional in front of you, it's kind of weird. You're like, that's what I look like? It's kind of like when you first hear yourself on, a, on audio recording, you know? And you're like, that's not me. Um, it's the same thing. And then when she started looking at it, she goes, okay, this isn't that far off, you know. I would like something just kind of close. There's just certain things that I would like. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> hey, you're not that late today, though. I started at 11. New time. Thursday's at 11 now. Oh, it's already 12.15 here. Wow. Okay. I'm chatting too much. Let's sew. You're here for sewing. Okay. So let's put in our um, shoulders, which I didn't get my uh, gathering stitches very good on this one. So I think I might take it out. This is the one, right? Because this one looks okay. Yeah, you guys, I'm, I'm just gonna, you're gonna have to suffer through this one right here because I don't think it's gonna gather up. It'll gather up. Oh, wait, Ugh, maybe it would have. <laughs> yeah, let's get rid of this one and this one, this, these two. And we'll put it back in. Perfect. Okay. It probably would have gathered fine, but now I know it will. Okay, here, let's see. I did, didn't realize I didn't get all of it out. Can you get all of it out? There we go. One more. Oh, gilly dilly. All right, let's carry on here. a little bit from that side and a little bit of from this side I always feel like they're competing with each other you know because I anthropomorphize everything everything has a voice and a personality it just thanks to growing up with my mom she does it for everything everything has a little song and a voice no I don't um Chauvin, but I do hear a lot because um, I don't have my camera set up on the serger and I'm not going to try until like, cause my iron camera stopped working like my pattern camera. And, um, so I still, I, I'm back to only having two cameras. I have two brand new cameras that are really awesome, but my computer doesn't like having so many hooked up. I need to add something to it and I need to just get a little help. So I'm not going to set it up on the serger until it can be dedicated or we're just going to be on the serger. And a lot of people don't have sergers. So I feel like, um, French seams are a great way to go, and they just aren't that much more effort. They look nice. Um, yeah, that's why. 
there's other ways you can do it. You can bind them, you can flat fell them, you can um, you can do all kinds of ways to do it, but French seams work really good for dressmaking. And it's, and it's really easy to do and demonstrate and get right, you know? So that's why I mostly do those. There's a lot of different seam finishes out there because sergers are a new invention. <laughs> Okay, I need to get these two going and then I'll get this one going because I can't grab these. There we go. Okay, I want to see how long this needs to be before I adjust too much, but I'm just kind of... My nails are like so long right now. It's great. They're like tools for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely admit that I didn't do them as much until I started live streaming. And like this dress, remember, I didn't finish at all. I didn't do any seam finishing at all, except for top stitching the seams. So you could fully line this bodice. I'm not doing that today, but it would, because it would be totally different, but um, totally possible. This is the right side, right? This is the right side. I'm so paranoid, I'm not gonna get it right. Let me just look at the directions, make sure I don't steer you guys wrong. It's just a straight um, shoulder seam, right? And then they do the side seams. I'm only looking at the pictures, maybe I should read it. <laughs> oh, so maybe I should be doing um, French seam right here. Hmm. I kind of want to use my serger for this because of the gathers. All right, well, let's try and do a French seam on this. Let's see how it goes. So we are put it right, wrong sides together first. It's an interesting seam to do a French seam on because of all the gathers, but um, if I pull them straight down and because I have that third row, that kind of sets me up better than not having the third row because the third row is outside the seam allowance. So I just put it, Gosh darn it, why isn't this, here we go, laying flat, there we go. Lining it up, I'm gonna sew the first one at a quarter and the second one at three eighths. And this is wrong sides together, shoulder seam. I'm starting at the neck first. All right, let's look at my gathers here. Now that I have it under the needle, it kind of helps. Let's flatten this out and make it nicer. Okay. So I'm going to this notch right here. The gathers need to fit inside there. All right, see how it lines up here. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm just going right alongside that first row of stitching. Separate it out. Oh, that's really funny, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> she said, oh, that's not quarter inch bait, by the way. What do you mean? What happened here? Okay. She said that on the sewing bee a few years ago, they uh, made it a big deal of giving them all sergers like it was a, like a big brand new item. And then the next year, they just, they just all got them by default. Oh, Louise, I guess that's true. Maybe that's what. Look at my seam allowance. I that was that's pretty poor. Oh wait, that's my that's my gathering kind of dipped down. Okay, I'm gonna trim this. Yeah, I know I didn't get it quite at a quarter. So sue me. I'm gonna take the top row of gathering stitches out right now. Okay. <clears throat> I 
That's my seam. Nobody panic. <laughs> well, let's do my other one and then we'll do our last French seam um, at the same time as the other one because then I can press both of these together. And because I got that seam allowance a little bit off, I'm going to do this one a little bit off as well. I got it at more like 3 8 I don't sweat that. It's a shoulder seam. If I can't lose an eighth of an inch on the front and an eighth of an inch on the back, then um, it probably wasn't going to fit that great. I, I would have had some other fit issues, you know. But I don't advocate doing the wrong seam allowance. Trust me. All right, so I'm going to... I love it when the gathers are at the end because then I can kind of do this. But I don't want to lose them on this side either. Okay, so get uh, my gather stitches. I'm just putting one thread to the right, the, the first row. I'm going to undo some of these. I'm going to hold that so that I, they don't undo because I want it to be gathered all the way up to that notch. There we go. That's a little better. Kind of helps too to like pull your gathers like this and straighten them out, which I haven't been doing very well. Okay. All right. Trim this. A little nerve wracking. I, I'm worried I'm going to I'm worried I'm going to uh, trim through my seam because I see the gather stitches there. I had such a nice, like, oh, well, I had like such a long to-do list on the shelf right here. And then I feel like they're kind of like, um, like we're getting through our dresses, you know? <laughs> Oh, right, right, right. This is a sewing bee that made you think of sewing, using it for, oh, to make you think of sewing clothes. That's so funny. I love my machine too. <laughs> oh, Tilly and Lauren from Guthrie Guy. Oh, that's why they're so popular. You can get a table like this. Well, not like this. This is an industrial machine, but um, have you ever saw, seen me sew on my um, home machine? Like, it does have a drop thing. The tables, it was expensive. I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat that. It was about $1,500 for that sewing cabinet. But there are very affordable tables where the t the um, part that your machine sets on drops down. It usually has three heights. So you can just Google that. Um, because you'll see ones that are very bare minimums. You don't have to have a big old cabinet like mine. They just didn't have that option at the time. Now they have lots of um, tiers, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know YouTube and Instagram have really made the crafty world a lot more easy. Okay, I'm going to press my uh, shoulder seam here. Um, I'm going to press it like one way and then I'm going to press it on the edge to get my setup for my um, French seam. And I'm sorry I don't have my iron camera today, you guys. Sorry.
one more. <laughs> okay, so first I pressed my seam allowance. Uh, I pressed it towards the gather side. It doesn't matter which side you press it to. And then I fold it um, on the seam line that was already sewn and then I press it there. Now I sew my French seam and I'm gonna encase that first cut edge. Why does this look like it doesn't line up? Why? Um, so your first seam you typically would be quarter inch and then your second one three eighths if you're doing a five eighths inch seam allowance. I kind of fibbed on that first one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Megan. <laughs> I do, I, lately um, I will admit, because a lot of you know that I game. That's how I learned about live streaming is gaming. When um, I'm alone, I will get a little ragey at a game. Lately, because I'm trying to play this particular game, and I really, really want bragging rights for this certain trophy, because the game is amazing. It's a really touching game, all the feels. And um, I get a little upset. I'm like, I told you to do that, you know? And I have, um, I have talked that way to my machine. You guys just don't hear me do it. I'm not holding back for you guys, I promise. You guys have seen me get mad a little bit, right? I kind of can let things go pretty e easily. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're so funny because... There are certain gaming streamers who have popularized certain phrases, and even though I don't watch some of them, I know who they are, and they're really popular, and they're fun to watch, but they don't, they're typically just not my style of gaming stream. And like one of them, he always says, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean that didn't fire? Or something like that. And um, I t tend to think that, like I I'll say it in a joking way, but you guys don't get it because you don't game, <laughs> you know. But it is funny, like if I'm gaming with younger friends online and I say that, they all kind of chuckle because, you know, I'm the old lady who games. So, <laughs> and then they know who I, where I got that from, you know. So, wait, is that the, that's the gaming or the <laughs> gathering thread? But yeah, I totally get upset. Especially like lately I've been trying to learn a computer program. Um, I'll be like, are you serious? Like I told you to do that. Like I just did it a second ago. Why can't you do it now? You know, that whole thing. I'm just removing my gathering stitches now. The instructions made me do it. Look at that. That looks like, um, that looks pretty cool. I, I think I could have done that nicer, but um, let's see how it looks on this side. Get rid of the gathering stitches. So now this is my, my neckline. Kind of got that 40s thing going, right? See that? My big fat arm in there. There we go. Get rid of those pinholes. I had a friend, you guys have seen her here before, Kirby. She um, texted me last night. Um, she's been making little bags and things like that, and she's selling them on Etsy. <laughs> you trying to, get, you to talk like a drunk? <laughs> a drunk and say, oh, yeah, you cuss like a say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I definitely was doing that last night because, like I said, I'm trying to play this one. I, I love this game called The Last of Us. It's amazing. Anyone who has played games has heard of The Last of Us. It came out in 2013. I'm late to the game. I've been playing it for about a year and a half. I'm going for the platinum trophy. It's really hard. I don't have a whole lot of platinums, but I want bragging rights on this one. And even young friends are like, um, wow, you played that on the hardest difficulty? I'm like, I played that on the hardest difficulty four times now. And they're impressed, which is pretty cool. But um, I have to play 
something like, um, what's 14 times 12? Something like that. It's like 185 games of this multiplayer mode and I have to play them successfully to get the trophy. And let me tell you, it is such a toxic environment where the people are toxic. I heard one guy last night in game chat saying totally disparaging remarks towards people of color and using bad words. And I just told him, I was like, dude, shut up. You know, like you're so ignorant. Why are you talking like that? You know, <laughs> it got me really surly. So then I left the game. <laughs> Kit Kat pissed me off the game. <laughs> I no longer use my machine. Now I tell it what I want to do. Yeah, Louise, you're the boss of that machine, right? You're like, okay, little machine. This is the plan for the day. I don't like how my gathers were a little bit spaced right there, but you know, this is up on my neck. Now you know why I have long hair. It's to cover up any, um, to any cut, cut up sewing machine. What, what did that spell correct do? Because I, I like that it did Katniss. All right, so let me look at all my gathering stitches. Those came out so nice and easy. There's one more. See right there, I didn't get my gathers too close together right here. They're really nice right there. Hubba hubba. Hubba hubba, I like that. Okay, so um, I think we're getting to the bias portion of tonight's entertainment. Which you know how I feel about that. Oh, we get to do the center front seam. Okay. Oh, and then we do the skirt. When do we do the bias? I want to do bias. We must do it at the very end. Can we do bias sooner? I like bias. I'm good at that. Oh, you play arc. I haven't played that. My sister just gave me um, a game everyone's heard of. Oh, Elder Scrolls Online. She doesn't really play, her husband does, but she likes watching and stuff. All right, let's do the center. Let's do the center. All right, so I'm just gonna treat this lining down here as one. Like I said, there is nicer ways to do this where you would have put, um, this is one continuous seam and all your centers first. But um, I didn't do it that way um, because I would rather you guys line the midriff and not be afraid to sew it. So I'm gonna line up these seams here. Oh, I was talking about understitching my, should I understitch that? Let's see, that's how it looks. What do you guys think? So this has um, top stitching here and here. Should I do there too? Can you see that very well? What do you guys think? It looks so dark on the screen. Sorry. You love that game, Karen? Oh, Katniss is, is Katniss your cat's name? That's cute. Um, yeah, so I got that for my birthday on Saturday, so I was thinking I could try that eventually, but I'm gonna get this multiplayer done, you guys. Yeah, I know. You know, Louise, it's awesome. Like, it's such a great escape. And you know what? Like, I used to have such a prejudice against it. Not maybe a such a prejudice, but I used to have a assumption about it, you know? And now I realize, like, it keeps my brain engaged. You know, you ha like, I've been playing a puzzle game a lot, and the puzzles are so amazing. It's a game called Hue, H-U-E. It's cool. If you have kids or something like that, or you just want to play it, I love it. It's all about humans and dinos. Oh, the uh, Elder Scrolls is? Oh, okay, cool. I think I've seen those beasts. Because one time I was watching a friend play. She was streaming just with her, for her friends. And I tuned in and she was like on the back of some two-legged dinosaur bird type thing. And I was like, what the heck? What, what are you doing? <laughs> I thought that was really funny. <laughs> she was just going around the countryside. 
So, um, I mean, it keeps, you know, and it's like, I don't need to knit anymore right now. Um, I, I love knitting and I want to, but I, I just don't want more sweaters. It's just so hot here. So, and I, and just sitting, I like watching TV, but I feel very like, I can't just sit there and watch TV now without my hands being busy. So I like it's interactive. I'm a part of the story. I get to steer it. You think about it it's very much an escape. So anyway, what do you guys think here? So this is the front here. Do I, they want me to top stitch right here, but I kind of like the soft look. But what do you guys think? Can you see that very well? Um, I want to I want to see if I can change the um, coloring a little bit. Okay, let me see. Oh, I don't like looking at me though. Let's. Um, I'm gonna try. It's a little better. I don't want it to be too bright. Oops. <clears throat> Never too late to learn how to knit, Megan. I love it. You're sculpting your garment. It's really cool. Especially if you're a tiny bit mathy. <clears throat> okay, I made everything pink, didn't I? But it does look true to the color on my screen. My hands are already kind of pink. Now I'm really pink. <laughs> Let's see if I can take that down a little bit. I'm not making any changes. Yeah, right? I know. I think I think you're right. I'm gonna leave it. I think two is enough. I think two is enough. Okay, so let's um I'm gonna top stitch this down so that it makes it so that I can treat it as one layer. Now, you know, like I said, I'm doing the budget version of lining the the midriff because you know if you were going to do this you would also finish it at the waist and all that and it would be really nice I don't want any torquing in there you know I don't want that to create any issues so I'm going to let the top fabric um, dictate all of it since this is the outer and I added the lining and there were so many seams in this that it could have changed the shape a tiny bit, right? Because anytime we have more seams, we have more opportunity to compound any micro errors. It is kind of a V-neck though. That's why I picked it because I really like V-neck. Came a little short there. My thumb is still kind of weird when I burned it. I didn't realize it. Okay, let's try the other one. So once we get past our dress month, I'm definitely going to start doing, I think, more pattern drafting streams. So that's also why I want to have someone come and um, work on my setup a little bit more. I want it to be reliable. Okay. What did you say yes for, Megan? <laughs> Yeah, I think with gaming that kids shouldn't be allowed to game, just adults. <laughs> it's 
So look at that. You see that? All right. Is it, is it actually flat? You know, with all those seams, it's hard to tell. Let me iron it. That would have been a good idea to do earlier. Hot pads. <laughs> like for the oven? You change colors. What do you mean you change colors? That looks better. This side I think was a little wonky right here. Gonna take out the stitching right here to right here. It's such a lightweight fabric, I can just pull out my stitching like that. Let me let me fix that. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. Get rid of this. It's on the lining piece. It's hanging under. Look at all these little thready threads. Cool. Let's sew our center front seam. Right here. All right, let's look and see how we line up here. I'm gonna fold it back on what I think is about the 5 8 inch seam. I really want that to line up. And it would be nice if all of these line up. Fingers crossed, let's see here. Oh, but I need to do French seam. Womp womp. Okay, so what could I do? Maybe I will, I will bind this. I just had an idea. <laughs> what if I bind the whole neckline all at once, including my seam allowance? Oh, I want to see if my seam's lined up. How'd I do? How'd I do? Not so great there. Great there. This is pretty good. This one's not so good. Does it bug me? Cause you know, when you have top stitching and you have the seam, sometimes it's an optical illusion that it's lined up or it's not lined up because one of those two things will line up and the other won't. Like on this dress, I do, do it a lot there. No, to get that lined up would be kind of tricky. I can actually, I could make the seam allowance bigger on this side by pulling this over a little bit to where, to, to when it will line up or making it smaller on this side. I could leave it um, or um, I'd have to take out the seam, one of those two seams, you know. But it doesn't, like, it's so busy right there. Can I do the bias binding now? Let's try it on. <laughs> okay, so 
So that right there. What I like is that um, it has those gathers which can be kind of saucy, but it's not really low cut. Like it's gonna be fully secure. And I can still wear a bra, you know, no problem. Stuff like that. I like that kind of stuff. Um, I don't see why I can't bind this right now. So maybe getting the bodice completely finished. Then, um, then we'll have just the skirt and the zipper left and the pocket I'm going to add. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. Why can't I do bias right now? Yeah, I think I'm going to. I want to get it over with. <laughs> yeah, I like this look too. Okay, so um, I'm going to trim my seam allowance right here. As I sometimes I have to kind of touch the thing and fiddle with it and think about it while I kind of figure out like, am I. I, you know, I think I can do that. So let's say, I, what I'm thinking is about binding each of these seams right here and then continuing around on the neckline, right? So because the seam allowance lines up right there, what I just need to do is just trim this seam allowance down. And then, Okay, wait, okay, I finished the binding here and not stitch it on the front. And then just switch to stitching it down here. Can I do that? I'm gonna press the seam open, you know? Okay, so where's my binding? Yeah, it has a um, very 40s vibe. Yeah, what do you, yeah, you like that, Terry? I like it too. Um, I like this color. And um, I'm kind of excited that it's going to be really long, you know? I'm kind of getting into that. It's kind of nice. So... All right, so let me let me let me think about this because I don't know if this is possible. What I'm thinking about doing, because I'm trying to finish the seam allowance and the neckline, and they're different. So, um, say I, if I sew this to here all the way around, and then I sew. So now I'm here. Now I'm here, okay, I've sewn. Because maybe I can't do it all in one, right? So let's see, I continue here. All right, all right. Okay, and then I went like this and I bound this edge, sewing it backwards, which is not helping me. Can right here, I stop sewing on here and switch to the, can I? I kind of need to do it. Let's take a chance. I think I can figure it out on the fly. All right, what is my right side? Okay, do you guys remember how to, um, this is the right side. Oh boy, this is hard to see. This is the right side. All these itty bitty pieces. <laughs> uh, this is the right side here. I'm just gonna lay out a bunch of them so that I don't have to think about it. 
This is the right side here. Okay. Um, get rid of your selvage. That just screws with the grain line. Makes it bound. Up. Okay. But I need all of these, I think. Well, don't. Okay, so you want, when you're sewing your bias together, you want the two pieces. These are both right side up right now. Both these pieces are both right side up and you want both of them to be the same angle. And then you can flip it right sides together, line it up the seam allowance. And so I sew quarter inch. I also trim these little things. See that little bunching up? That's what I don't want my darts to do. I trim the little um, points off and then you have a nice um, continuous piece of bias. You can press these open or um, to one side. When you have it professionally made, they, pr they press it to one side because it's so time. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> your, have your ears been burning? How's your, uh, we all wanna know how your bootstrap dress form's coming. We were creeping on you on Instagram. Do you, do you mind sharing your Instagram to people? I kind of mentioned it, but then I realized maybe you don't. I don't know. I can't remember if you're public or private. So this is a that, you know, ragged piece. Because remember, I cut this from the leftovers. And welcome. We're glad you're here, too. All right. So I'm just piecing together some bias. I'm going to do an experiment right now. I've been thinking about also doing experiments. Because <laughs> um, there's certain things like I know that we're supposed to, supposed to do a certain way. <clears throat> You're always all about falling on your patio. Why? <laughs> I'm ironing because I'm procrastinating because I'm still thinking. Yeah, we were creeping on you. Yeah, she's Dorvis Bun on Instagram. So check out her. Because we're talking about dress forms. I was talking about, I was kind of thinking about getting one. I don't think I want to make one, I have to admit. I, I kind of want to get one that's close to my measurements if I can. Maybe adjust it if I have to. Backstitching these is not going well, so I'm going to stop backstitching them. I don't usually. The fabric is too lightweight. You <laughs> creeper. <laughs> yeah, the pollen's bad here, too. It's not bad right now, but it was really bad. And my car, I had gotten a brand new car, the truck, and it's navy blue. My husband was like, oh. <laughs> That'll be fun this time of year. I was like, yeah, you're right, huh? But I don't care. It's blue. I wanted the blue. You're having, you are having a blast. Are you being sarcastic? Because I know it was touch and go there for a bit, but then you kind of looked at it and you were like, you know, this actually is a little closer than I thought. That's what I was telling them. So I looked you up and I looked it up that you, it's called bootstrap dress form. All right, you guys. So yeah, I've been thinking about doing some experiments like for all kinds of things like how to why do some hems flip up in the laundry and others don't weird things like that yeah exactly right Nancy yeah I think it's good to have a solid color dress form just from experience like the one I have someone graffitied all over it and it and it it takes away from whatever you're making on it and it distracts your eye and it's and you really need to focus you know so but I think, yeah, making a decorative one is a good idea, too, as a trial. So, so yeah, I'm thinking about doing experiments. Um, this is the way I look at it, just to be really plain with you guys. I know that what I'm doing here probably makes a lot of people nervous, like especially pattern companies, um, because they're probably worried that I don't know how to sew very well or I might bash them or I might do it wrong or whatever, right? So I never get likes from pattern companies. Maybe, rarely I will get one or two. Um, 
And I'm not looking for that. That's why I don't really tag them a lot of times. So I'm, you guys have maybe wondered why I don't tag a lot of people in my things because I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not sponsored. So I don't really feel like I have to promote people. Um, and I try and hashtag it so people can find us and then be like, oh, great, there's a sewing tutorial, you know, um, and that that's definitely promoting them. Totally, gosh, I'm totally happy to give props to these pl places, but it's so much work making posts and stuff like that and all the hashtags and tagging and all that. So I don't really feel beholden to it. I've actually had someone local say, hey, how come you don't tag um, the local fabric store and all your posts? And I'm like, well, you know, they don't pay for the fabric and a lot of the fabric doesn't come from them. So, you know, I sometimes, I'm totally apparent, you know, or um, transparent about stuff like that, you know. So, um, but doing more pattern thing, pattern streams, which I think you guys all really want, and doing more experiments kind of gets me away from that, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, I do too, Nancy. I really love sewing sculptural things. I loved being in the technical outerwear, outerwear industry. I'm not here to become an internet sensation. I'm just looking here to help people and become um, a sewing community of people, you know? So, all right, so let's see. I have to think about this. I may be rip, seam ripping and I don't really want to right here, but I might. So I'm gonna sew this kind of close to the seam, my bias. And that's because um, where it lines up at the top. I wish I could see it, but I need to sew from the um, right side of the fabric. So this is why I'm doing it here. You love the honest opinions about things. Well, I don't tell you like some things because I'm not, I'm not here to bash others. I really do feel like it's not an easy thing. I don't like bad fit being celebrated and I see that a lot. And I see really prominent people celebrating um, bad fitting things. And, and it's because they're not very experienced and I can't say that. So I hope you guys don't think ill of me for saying that in general. But there are a lot of really popular people, sewists, influencers, bloggers, podcaster, podcasters out there promoting a lot of bad fitting things because it's kind of a mutual you know like oh let's all pat each other on the back thing but the thing is like um that's not really helpful to you guys you know so and i'm not the kind of person that's going to say hey you know this is probably because I, I don't have any clout <laughs> i'm not looking for clout i don't have any clout you know I have been in this world a lot longer than a, and than some folks, but I'm not an expert. And um, I, oh, wait, 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 wait. Huh. Am I showing the wrong side? Is this what I get for talking honestly? Am I being punished? I'm being punished, aren't I? Am I being punished? I am being punished. Yeah, exactly. This is a group of sewers that um, all geek out and think, what, how, what, the, <laughs> yeah, Janice has the right idea. Just stick to the fabrics. You can tell the wrong side from the right side on, but yeah, so no one really knows me here. I've been in this industry a long time, but it's not like anyone knows me. I've been doing my own thing, have my own business. I've been in the knitting world. I've been doing, I've been a sewer in the knitting world, you know, so, um, but, you know, there are a lot of experts for people to ask out there. And there's a lot of self-taught people, which I applaud that. But at the same time, like, um, one day they're going to look back and go, oh, shoot, you know. This pant gives everybody camel toe. Why didn't anyone say anything? <laughs> Drink. Nancy's here. <laughs> I, I lost the rest of you, too. You're like, oh, no. I'm a really honest person, you guys. You just don't hear it all the time. I'm not, I won't lie. I'm not going to um, sugarcoat anything. That doesn't do anybody a favor. 
But it would be nice to have some sponsored streams because um, I can't, I won't be able to buy fabric and patterns forever, you know? So that is just the darn truth. And, um, you know, maybe my streams won't, won't be uploaded forever either. They'll just be live and that's it. Yeah. Exactly. Good patterns, not doing everything, same item made, 100. Wait, what does that mean? Yeah, so. I don't know. That's just how I feel. Okay. Did I flip my bias? No, I didn't flip my bias. It's just I'm being punished for being honest, I swear. Okay. And I won't stop being honest. I know, right, Nancy? I know, and it's really easy for me to be like, oh, maybe that look is better than I think it's supposed to look. You die when it comes to benefit, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there's a couple of really popular patterns out there, and the way I just look at it, I'm like, okay, it's not for my body type, but I see all body types using it, and I think, like, there's nothing wrong with saying this pattern is suitable for these body types, you know? The testers that we had sew it measure this, you know, like I think that is really important to state. What size they're wearing and what size, what um, they measure and what modifications they did. That is transparency. There's, it, it doesn't disparage your own pattern to say, hey, this pattern uh, flatters hourglass people really well or people with a smaller bust size, these are for a pear shape. That just tells all the people that are that shape and size, like, cool, I know I can make that. And you're gonna have the same number of people making it. Rather than having people make something and not like it, I feel like that's worse, right? You would much rather people be successful. Okay, I think this experiment's gonna work, but I'm still worried it's gonna be a little fiddly at the center front. Oh yeah, and camel toe shoes, I don't know, right? Yeah, I... I just don't understand it, so. And I feel like I'm getting to that age where um, if I say something, it sounds like I'm being conservative and older, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, that's just true. <laughs> Nobody likes camel toe. <laughs> and that, that thing I'm talking about, that particular pattern, it's not just that. Like there's a few, there's a few other things going on with it, so. But you know. The Mutual Admiration Society disagrees with me. All right, so I'm sewing my bias, and I'm sorry I'm not being very instructional about it. It's because I got sidetracked into turning it into an experiment. So um, I am sewing the bias right sides together. Typically when I sew bias, I sew it from the inside of something to the outside. But with this kind of treatment, because the bias goes to the inside of the neckline and finishes and stays completely on the inside of this neckline, you're going to want to start um, from the um, outside and go to the inside. So right sides together, essentially. Okay, so I'm getting here and you can see, here's my jog for my seam allowance right here. So I'm just continuing on. I'm trying to, I'm sewing this at a quarter inch seam right here and I'm kind of trying to stay close to that seam there because I'm gonna use this to finish my seam allowance at the center front. So it's not something I, I've remembered that I needed to do. <laughs> right, Nancy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I feel like not saying anything also can be harmful and lead people astray in the case of what I'm doing, you know? So, yeah, right, Nancy, exactly. Oh, right, Rachel, totally, I know, exactly. I also get confused by how good something feels and then how I look in it, and I'm like, God, this is so comfortable, but it's not that flattering on me. And then I kind of think, you know what, that's okay. 
I don't need to conform to what I think is flattering in society. So sometimes I wear it anyway. You know what I mean? Right, Megan? Oh, totally. That's awesome, Louise. Yeah, see, exactly. Yeah, so a holiday, like that is mostly why most um, garment companies get started. And that's why I say you can tell kind of what the designer looks like by the way their garments fit. Like I know someone with really long arms, you know, at Patagonia started their pattern department. <laughs> trying not to catch my outer dress right now. I may have just now, let me see. Yeah, because I'm not surging and um, I forgot to do a French seam at the center front. I thought maybe this could work. So let's see, I wanna see if I caught anything right here. Nope, we are in the clear. Phew, I just got a little wrinkle there. That's why, that's probably what I felt. Yeah, exactly. I hope that, I, I agree, Louise. I, they do seem to be approaching that professionally. My one thing about that is that I really hope that they will also pull the curvy community on what they want it to be called because I have some very strong feelings about that and calling it curvy and plus is um, fine if they're fine with that. But I really feel like it's sizing. So why not just call it the sizes? You know, like this is our um, zero to 18 size bracket and this is our 20 to whatever, 26 bracket, you know what I mean? Um, rather than, cause it's just like in Europe, I feel like a lot of times when you buy something there, it's not small, medium or large. So it doesn't have that connotation, it's a number. It's a 38, a 36, a 34, or whatever, because it's the best or whatever. I could see that, that maybe that's too transparent also. Maybe people will be uncomfortable seeing that number. But I also think it's just a number. Like when you see four women with the exact same measurements next to each other, it's kind of shocking how different they look. And it illustrates that um, it's just a number, you know? So... Yeah, exactly, Nancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I am the same way. If I don't have something nice to say, I'm not going to be mean about it. But at the same time, I'm definitely, if my friends ask me for advice, like I've definitely had them ask me, like, what do you think about this dress pattern, Sarah? I'm like, that dress pattern's great, but I want you to look at the hashtag and look at the body type it looks the best on because you, my friend, aren't that body type. And that is not an insult. It's just a different body type, right? You know? So, yeah. So, um, cause I want them to be successful. I want them to all become sewers. <laughs> okay. So here's my, now I'm down to my, my experiment part. So when I get to here, this is what I want to know is, um, when I get here, so I'm going to bind this seam allowance. Okay. To itself. Okay. And then when I get right here, what do I do? So I'm here, I stop, and how do I do this seamlessly? To think about that, I may have to clip it. Can you guys see okay? Okay, so here's my neckline. And so this bias binding is being sewn completely different than right here, right? So this is gonna get folded under and top stitched down. It's not double fold in the other, the sense where it straddles a seam like this one is here. So if I want this one to be double fold, I think I need to clip it. And so they top stitch this down on the center front. Now I could do that. I could just stitch it down and not worry about this at all. And I think that would actually look okay as long as I keep it even. Maybe that would be the best thing to do. <laughs> Wouldn't you like me to get past this anyway? <laughs> Stop doing experiments on your time. <laughs> 
So let's clip our neckline because um, it's going to be a little tricky to get this bias to lay flat on this kind of neckline. It doesn't work that great. It's just true. Bias going to the inside of a neckline is a great idea in theory, but it rarely lays flat without some sort of flipping, curvature, binding. So when you put your bias on, try not to pull it too much, especially when you're in these curvier areas. Um, I know that I say on my binding video to pull it a little bit so that it naturally wants to straddle the edge when you turn it to the other side. But on something like this, this is a little different. You're wanting it to lay flat, not um, hug the edge. <laughs> yeah, you learn, watch that. I like to figure things out on the fly. All right, so I'm gonna trim this seam allowance down. I think I'm committed to that idea of just sewing the entire neckline the same way. So if you're kind of confused where we're at, this is the neckline and the center front seam. You could totally do it this way. I'm not sure how you're supposed to finish this seam. I think it just says finish the seam the way you like the to do it. And this is at the end of the instructions. Um, the reason I'm doing it now is because my binding is going to go into the waist seam. So I want it to be done when I go to do the skirt. I should have said that earlier. That's why, kind of why I'm skipping. That's why I feel like, okay, this is okay to do this right now because I need this seam, the center front seam right here that I have, I need it to be finished um, before I put the skirt on. And because I forgot to do the um, French seam, which I actually don't think would have been very nice right there, um, I'm gonna do the binding instead. So um, I need it to be finished. So that's why I'm doing it now. Let's just look and see what we got here. I'm gonna press this. I'm really sorry, you guys, I'm pressing so much and I don't have the iron cam. My cameras can go suck it right now. <laughs> That's how I feel about them. <laughs> Not happy. I love spending another $250 on cameras and then I can't use them, right? That's the other thing, I have a lot of money in my setup, so that's why I like, I just wanna do what I wanna do. If I'm not gonna be sponsored, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, you know? And I would really like to build a positive community of people that are eager to learn, want to be honest about things, and kind of push past their mistakes, and get better, and support each other. I really want that, so. Okay, so um, I'm gonna press this, uh, like this along the edge of my neckline. So that's nice, looks like that. I could edge stitch it, under stitch it I mean. I'm gonna under stitch it after I press it. Okay, it'll just take me a second. All right, almost done. Just checking it out now that it's pressed and see how it looks. Okay. 
getting kind of into the ironing. <laughs> One more spot, one more spot, one more spot. Okay, right here. Okay. <laughs> That's right, Louise, right? It's my stream, I should do what I want. I learned that a lot from gaming streamers because you know, they are like, I don't like playing this game, you guys. I don't wanna play it right now, don't watch me. Because <laughs> people are like, play Fortnite. And they're like, I don't wanna play Fortnite. <laughs> like that's how I feel I'm like you know I'll, I will definitely get people requesting things which I'm totally open to request I really want to do what you guys want to do but if it's not something it's going to work for me or I don't have a place to take that garment um I might not do it just because it's all out of my pocket so I've got to make it relative I wouldn't mind donating it, donating garments and stuff like that, but you know, I got I still can't just do that too, you know, because so I won't be here forever then. All right, so I pressed my neckline. So here's what I'm talking about when you have a neckline and you're doing the binding to it. Right here, when you get here, it's really hard to get it to lay flat here. Look, I have this as an angle. So when I curve that, you get a lot of torquing here. When I fold it and press it down, it's gonna help because it's narrower. But just know this is hard for everybody and it's never very ideal to do this kind of seam finish on a curve like this. There's better ways to sew it and there's lots of tips and tricks. I hear Sonia Phillip um, who is 100 acts of sewing and she does all the like dress number one, tunic number one, shirt number one. She has, um, I've heard a really great tutorial on how to do this. I haven't watched it. I don't know if it's any different than the way I do it. So, but I've heard it's good. The narrower, the better it'll be but less because the what ha is happening there is this measurement is different than the measurement it's sewing to and it can only stretch so much, you know. It's biased, but it can only stretch so much. All right, I'm gonna go for it. Really, I just want to make sure that I get it evenly spaced along the center front. That's the only place I'm kind of worried about it. Oh, I want to edge stitch. I'm going to edge stitch first, guys. I don't need to edge stitch down here, but I'm going to edge stitch at the neckline is what I want. So when you edge stitch, under, I'm under stitching, sorry. Hi, Julia. Pocket time. I don't have any pockets yet. <laughs> Why, I, why wouldn't they have a facing for that? Um, because, um, I don't know if you saw the neckline, but it's a bunch of gathers. So what I think would be good is putting a back neck facing and then um, just bias binding on the center front neckline. I honestly think they tried to keep this as simple to sew as possible. And there's a lot of potential to make this a pretty snazzy dress with lining and stuff like that. You've been lurking. <laughs> what are you up to, Julie? Did you guys have a good weekend last weekend? I heard Brooke got home. I just sewed that a little bit crooked. I, I know it's like, a, it, it's, it's bright over here for you guys, but it's not that bright for me. If I put one more light on, it might blow you guys out, but it's a little dark for me right here. I have to admit, like, I feel like my glasses aren't as good at this distance. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, Julia? Let me look at it. Once I get this understood, let's, let's look at it. Um, because I feel like um, that wouldn't be a hard thing to do. And I think like the best case scenario, like the best time to make that back neck facing is after you have all the darts sewn. Cause there's three in the back neck. You could do it on the paper. I mean, that's, that's what I would do. But at the same time, I think you could totally do it um, 
uh, after it's sewn and then cut your fabric out. Yeah, so let's look at the back here. Yeah, so I would do a back neck facing totes. Oh, awesome, Julia. It's okay. I'm glad you didn't go shopping for all of us, you know, just because we were bullying you into it. Sorry, I have one hair tickling me and it's driving me nuts. So, huh. Yeah, so I would put the back neck facing right here, but see there's three darts right here. <clears throat> so I'd sew those up and then just lay the fabric down and then um, trace off a facing. Um, I would do it about two and a quarter inches wide from the raw edge to out here. You can't do it too wide because of the, well, you could, you can't go past here. So you could do it. You could even do, you know, big, but it, you know, then it gets wrinkly and flips. So I would do it about two and a quarter and then it'll finish about one and three quarters, two inches, depending on how you do your seam finish on your facing. And then just sew that in there. Um, and then you can do your bias binding just on the front because there's no curve on the front neckline. It's just, it's just gathers. See that? So here's the center front, here's the midriff, here's the bust, and it's just a straight line right there. So let's watch me struggle with it, because <laughs> I think I'm going to. It's why I have long hair, remember? To cover up all my sewing mistakes. All right, my bias is a little wide. I need more light. I'm trying to look at the seam here, not my wonky stitching there. I really want it to be even from the center front seam and it, it may not be. So yeah, you could tack it down by hand or, um, catch it in the shoulder seams. Like I would actually sew the center back facing and then line up the raw edges of the shoulders and then do your um, neck binding. You could even sew your shoulders so that you could line up your raw edges and then like turn it right side out like a collar I think. Yeah, the hair down trick, exactly. That's why I'm growing my hair down past my butt. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> okay, this is definitely on the fly. That's my disclaimer right now. I'm trying to get my gathers out of there. This edge right here, nice and straight. It's a picnic, no problem. And then we're gonna get up to the back neck facing and we're gonna be raging at our sewing machine. So. I'm gonna pretend like it's gonna be okay. Oh, it actually, okay, it's actually sewing really nicely. I take everything back I say <laughs> about this. I take everything back I said. <laughs> it got a little narrower, but you know, long hair don't care, right? <laughs> This is like, uh, I know like a lot of sewists would be like, please be okay, please be okay. I'm saying the same thing, you guys, right now. I'm like, please let this look okay on the outside. Please let this look good on the outside. I'm totally chanting that in my head right now. I 
Mainly because I don't really want to seam rip it when it's in such a delicate spot. All right, I'm back at my center front. Pull my gathers out best I can here. Trying to look at the seam allowance width. Gotta get your whole body into it, don't forget. Spining's a little wide right there. Should have just done a French seam, but I actually don't think the French seam would have worked out very good. Because this looks a little funny in person. Okay. <laughs> right, Nancy. <laughs> um, ooh, would I make this in a knit? Maybe. You have to be careful of the sizing, though. A little bit of puckering right here. Let's press the heck out of it. I got some torquing. Ironically, the best part's the back. So I take everything back I say about doing the bias binding on the neck seam, but look at that. It looks really nice. <laughs> Let me press it real quick. I didn't spend too much time on the ironing because I think I might want to fix part of it. See, so I feel like lining the whole bodice would be a, a better idea. That's what I think, Julia. I think lining the whole bodice. Oh, right, so no need for a zipper, Megan? Yeah, exactly, so I pony my hair to the front. <laughs> Rapunzel. Okay, so this looks pretty good, uh, but I'm not a fan of right here. This side's fine, this side's not so fine. And so can you also see like, the back looks okay, but do you see that it sticks up like this right here? Can you see that? See, it's not laying flat, so that is what I'm talking about. So I got it on there. But it's gonna do that a little bit on me. Oh yeah, Megan, I do it all the time. I do this. I just do the side braid. <laughs> you know, like this. You know what, she took more than a half inch off yesterday and I'm gonna text her. Like that. Yeah, right, Julia? Exactly. Yeah, so I feel like it would take a lot of fabric. That's the disclaimer. Yeah. Um, so I did line my midriff right here. And that, you know, this would, ne I would never do it that way, you know? So you get, a, if you don't like bias, line the whole bodice. And then you would just literally sew um, two complete bodices and then attach them at the neckline. Turn to the inside and then keep going. You could just, um, and then sew your side seams separately from each other, and then your sleeves are the, the tricky part, but you could probably sew your sleeve hems together, you know, or just do the bias binding thing or treat it as one layer. So you're not going for reversible, it's different. So lining and reversible are different, so you know, don't put that burden on you that it has to be completely finished on both sides and then reversible because let's be honest, are you ever gonna reverse that reversible item, you know? It is Louise, exactly, that's exactly what I was saying. But And so we were talking that you could do a back neck facing instead. This turned out okay, I just know it's gonna do that on me, so. Um, right here, I'm gonna take this out, this stretch out right here, 
and I might sew it from the top. The, the reason I probably got that is because I sewed going this direction that way and this direction that way, you know? I just, you know how I feel about back tacks on my, um, on my garments though. I don't like visible back tacks. Call me a weirdo. <laughs> oh, you were thinking 80s pony, yeah. That, you know what, I I think my head's just really sensitive. I can't do things that are up very much. I will do like side, or like little low buns. You'll see those a lot coming up because when it gets hot here, my hair is like a freaking wool blanket on my head. So I have to pat my hair up all the time. But I really like having long hair. It's just easier for me. And so I just deal with it all summer. But let me tell you, right before bed every night, I want to cut it off so I don't have to sleep with it. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, let's, let's start right here. Oh, I went this way? What the heck? Right? I did start, I did go this way. That's weird. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to kind of pull this out a little better. I'm going to not be so careful. I tend to do a little better when I don't so slow. I pretend like I know what I'm doing and I convince myself like you've got this. You know what I mean? Got this. No prisoners. Let's see if that worked. Well, that didn't work. So maybe I do need to take some prisoners. I don't like that at all. I'm taking it out and I really don't like my back tuck right there. Look at that, that looks terrible. Let's see, I'm gonna figure out a nice way to do this. It's sewing experiment time. I need a little theme song for that because I get kind of into it. Don't like the way this looks though. I don't mind it right there. <laughs> that's that's awesome, Nancy. barely wear barrettes <laughs> my hair has to dry that way like it has to start wet and then dry that way all right um I am kind of thinking I might take this out to the waist so that my back stitch isn't right there but at the same time this looks nice and I don't want to upset the balance but I'm taking it out I'm putting my back I don't want my back stitch there you can be picky about the things you're picky about. That's what I'm picky about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Nancy's trolling us with that one or not. Because it sounds very functional, but I also feel like she's like, I wonder how many of them I can get to do that. You know? Oh, it's the side. Okay. All right. Time to do it from the top. It's been sewn a few times. It's going to do it. It's going to stay that way. Got to move the tools out of the way. Sorry, I sing. I'm a terrible singer. All right. Sometimes these lighter weights, though. Who's doing the, who has the chiffon cut out and they're nervous? The sheer fabric dress. <laughs> All right, Olivia. Woohoo, long weekend. Good for you. Thanks for stopping in. That looks way better. Okay, please be okay on the other side. Please be okay on the other side. <laughs> I needed to go catch. Oh, I bet Louise. Yeah, I know a few curlies. 
Their morning routine is so fascinating to me. That looks good. Look at that. Nice. Nice. That looks really good. Okay. And then I caught it. See, because I've already sewn it a few times. All right. I feel good about that. Yeah. It better be low enough for my bust, you know? Yeah? <laughs> the visual. <laughs> there you <laughs> so funny no not on the legs okay <laughs> you guys are making me laugh okay um let's read the instructions <laughs> and let's see where we're at all right so we are um on page we're right here uh we skipped ahead and we did the um bias right here so we're done with that we just have the skirt. I'm going to do the side seams. And I'm going to hem the sleeves. And then I'm going to call it a day. Unless you guys. Is my is this taking off? Yeah, yeah. I think I like I like this. It suits up your top half so far. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Um, I'll have to try it. I'll have to try it. Um without a dress on underneath. I need to trim this off, otherwise I might not catch my uh, lining there. there All right, side seams. Oh, French seams, French seams. Almost forgot. The number of garments that have this exact kind of sleeve, I'll tell ya. Oh wait, is this the, um, okay. Hey, stop, oh, what are you doing there? Okay, so this is the, this is the outside. So typically when you uh, add a, a zipper, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, thanks. This fabric looks funny on the screen to me, but maybe it's okay. So usually your um, zipper on it's on the side seam is on your left side because most people are right-handed. It's funny how only there's not a whole lot of advocacy for lefties out there. So if you're left-handed and you want to zip up your dress on this side, you can put it on your right side. But I'm gonna put I am right-handed. I'm gonna put it over here, and I'm gonna add the pocket to the um yeah the skirt. Thank you, Megan. Exactly. So you notch both sides of your side seam, but you don't need to add a zipper to both. So just pay attention to the notch that's on the side of your zipper. And I'm gonna do that right now because, and, and it's, still, it's still a French seam. I kind of want to, I kind of want to do this side seam, not a French seam. Maybe I'll bind, bias bind the edges. Uh, because I can't remember how it works with that on a French seam. So I'm going to, I'm just going to sew a little bit just so I have some structure here. But I'm not going to go all the way. Apparently I'm not even going to use the proper seam allowance either. Okay, so I'm just going to um, not sew anything because I don't have bobbin thread. Okay, so where did I run out of bobbin? No, oh, no, no, I do have bobbin. Why didn't that sew? Okay, good. Well, at least I know my last seam <laughs> sewed because. Okay, is that the sewing fairy trying to tell me something? She can be evil sometimes. All right, let's do the seam allowance proper. I'm just going to go for a little ways. Not to the drill. I'm not going to go to my um, drill, you guys. Uh, sorry, I call it a drill. I'm not going to go to the top of the zip the, the zipper notch right here to the top of the zipper because I'm going to give myself a opportunity to look at this before I, I sew it on Saturday. 
Okay, so I'm just putting my side seam there. I'm just leaving like that. This side seam over here, I will sew. Because I'm gonna look at doing a French seam with an invisible zipper. I can't, I can't recall if I've ever done that before. So I wanna check it out. Like thinking about doing it is kind of confusing to me. <laughs> Why isn't this curve the same? All right, so I'm sewing quarter inch, roughly. I'm gonna trim it to get rid of this um, little threads because it's a French seam and I don't want them to poke out. Um, I'll iron it real quick. All right, Nancy, we're almost done. <laughs> oh, really, Megan? Oh, bummer. Sometimes if my um, machine doesn't start on the fabric, it'll do that. So, especially on my home machine. Bye, Nancy. My um, pug goes someplace and they put him in this little sling. <laughs> and then so he's like hovering there to get his nails trimmed and they call it the taco. <laughs> so we call it taco time. Molly has to have like a little Dremel and all that, you know, um, and then she goes to the, she just does it at the groomer. But Loki can, he can just, I can just give him a bath in the sink or in the shower, he's so little. And then we just take him to the, uh, this, this pet store slash groomer for the taco time. All right, so there's my, side seam there looking good and I think that's where I'm gonna call I'm gonna wait on the sleeve of sleeve hems because I didn't finish that side seam quite yet and I need to know how that's gonna finish before I do my side seam so plus I need to leave something to sew on Saturday right so let's look at it though now that we have a side seam that's cute Looks good. Trim my bias off here so it looks like it's a straight line. Because it was, it really was. All right, you guys. Cool, so that only leaves the skirt and the um, zipper and hem and sleeve hems and that one side seam and the pocket. I got you, Megan. So, <laughs> Nancy does make us laugh. <laughs> So cool. Thanks for coming, you guys. This turned out great. I'm excited. I'm really glad I squeezed out enough to make a really long dress. It's feeling a little caftan-ish to me, the way, the way the bodice fits. is kind of Charlie Caftan-ish. But that's not a bad thing. Like, I like that. I just feel like I'm going to have two dresses of the same silhouette. And um, I uh, maybe could have stretched myself a little further than what I was thinking. I was stretching myself, so... <laughs> Get rid of all these little threads. You know how I feel about immortalizing them. All right. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I know it's a weekday and that some of you have to work. And um, yeah, you know, it's a weekday. I get it. 
So I'll see you on Saturday for continuing our dress sew along. I hope some of you are making the Myrna. Let me know. Make sure you hashtag your things on Instagram, S-S-L-S-A-L, so I can see your sew alongs. And you know what? I keep forgetting to check the hashtag, so I apologize if I missed some of them. And um, let's see what else. So next week, I'm either doing the tea house dress or the Upton dress. So I've got my fabric ready for that. We'll finish this on Saturday. Finish my shirt soon too. And it was a pleasure having you guys. I really appreciate it. And um, I love that. We had some from South Africa today. That's awesome. Thanks, Cheyenne. Bye, Rachel. Bye, Louise. Janice, Megan, Karen. <laughs> I think Olivia already left and Nancy already left. Um, who am I missing? Julia. Let me scroll up here. I don't want to miss anybody. <laughs> I know there's more people than that watch, than than talking that are watching, but um, bye to you too. Thank you so much for coming. You're always welcome to come here and lurk. Yeah, right. The air sleeves. Yeah, I know it's not quite like the Charlie, but I think on me it's gonna look a little bit like that. So, all right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you Saturday. Happy sewing. Um, oh, go out for dinner, Louise. That sounds great. You can catch us on the on the other part. You got to see all the fun bits. You can miss me struggling with the invisible zipper. Oh, I got to go get a, a visible zipper today. So, bye guys. I'll talk to you soon.